This is part two of topic three on material structures. Recall in the last section that we talked about the different Brave lattices that many metals can have for their crystal structures. The ones we're going to focus on now are the cubic system and a variant on the hexagonal system. We're going to learn more about how to define the geometry of these crystal unit cells. Let's start with the simple cubic unit cell. The simple cubic unit cell consists of eight atoms sitting at the corners of a cube, hence the names simple and cubic. There's only one geometry parameter that's needed to define the crystal structure of a simple cubic cell, and that's the length of one side. Since all the, lengths, all the sides have the same length, you only need to define one length. And since it's a cube, all the angles between the sides are 90 degrees. We can draw this structure in two ways. We can draw it in what's called the stick ball model, where I have balls that represent the atoms and sticks connecting the atoms that represent the bonds between the atoms. This is a convenient way to show the crystal structure or unit cell <clears throat> because we can see what's going on inside the unit cell, but it's not very realistic. A more realistic picture would be the hard sphere model where I imagine I have balls for the atoms and the atoms touch, or the balls touch, along the, the lengths where the atoms would touch in real, in real space. This is a more realistic depiction of what the unit cell looks like, but as you can see, it's a little bit harder to tell what's going on inside the unit cell. So we'll focus on the stick ball model for now, but please understand that there, these sticks don't really exist in the real picture. Let's take a look at some of the things we can learn about the simple cubic unit cell. Let's see if this animation works. Nope, it doesn't work. Sorry about that. Well, let's see how many atoms can we get per unit cell. It turns out there's only one atom inside the simple cubic unit cell. And the key to that is inside the unit cell. Yes, there are eight atoms sitting at the corners of the cube, but each of those corners is shared by eight other unit cells. I know that seems a little hard to believe, but if you want to take a look at the picture over here on the right, you'll notice that if we imagine a corner atom sitting here in the center, there are eight unit cells, four on top and four on the bottom, that share that one atom. That means that only one-eighth of this atom is actually inside the unit cell. If one-eighth is inside the unit cell, that means that eight corners have one-eighth each for a total of one atom per unit cell. The length of one side is called the lattice parameter, and the symbol we use for the lattice parameter of a simple cubic structure is A. Well, one way to do this is to look at the hard sphere model and notice that the atoms touch along the side of the unit cell. That means that the unit cells can be defined in terms of the number of radii of the atoms across that unit cell position. In this case, that's A equals 2R. So in other words, the size of the unit cell depends on the size of the atom. And that should make sense. The bigger the atom, the bigger the unit cell to contain those atoms. The last thing we can figure out about the simple cubic unit cell is something called the atomic packing factor. The atomic packing factor measures the volume of atoms that are inside the unit cell divided by the volume of the unit cell itself, or the atom volume divided by the cell volume. Well, the atom volume is determined by the number of atoms in the unit cell, that's 1, times the volume of an atom, we'll assume an atom is a sphere, so that's 4 thirds pi r cubed, divided by the cell volume. Well, the cell volume is the length cubed, and in this case, the length is 2r, so 2r cubed. If we do the math, you'll notice that the r values cancel out. So the atomic packing factor is independent of the size of the atoms that you have in the unit cell. It doesn't matter what atoms make up the simple cubic unit cell, it always packs with the same efficiency. And that efficiency is 52%, or 0.52. In other words, 52% of the unit cell is occupied by matter, the other 48% is empty space. It's true, there's nothing in the gaps between the atoms. We'll see other examples as we move along. Now you might be asking yourself, what materials actually have a simple cubic unit cell? And the answer is not very many. In fact, to my knowledge, there's only one material, osmium, that, that creates a simple cubic unit cell at very high temperatures. And there's a simple reason for that. The atomic packing factor is very low for simple cubic unit cells, 0.52. That's much lower 
than the, t the packing factor of all other crystal structures. Atoms have one thing in common. They all like to snuggle. And when, what I mean by snuggling is they like to pack into space as tightly as possible to lower their energy states. So if you have a very low atomic packing factor, you're not s snuggling very much. The atoms aren't bonding together very tightly. So it's not going to be the most stable or lowest energy crystal structure for most materials. And that's why we don't see it very often in nature. We'll talk about the next.